This is section 2.4 and we're going to talk more um, about slope. So I want you to look at these two lines here. I want you to look at the slope of these two lines. Let's look at this first line on the left hand side. If I were just to eyeball it, I would look at maybe two points on this line. See that point right there and that point right here. And if I were to look at the slope of this line, it looks like I'm going to rise one, two, three, four units. And I'm going to run to the right one, two units, which gives me four over two, which is taking me two over one or two. Now, if I look at the line on the right hand side and I pick two points on that line, here's the point here and here's the point right here. It looks like I'm going to rise one, two, three, four units, which to the right one, two. So this line is four over two or 2 over 1, or just 2. Notice how these two lines have the exact same slope, and these lines are parallel, I mean they never cross one another. So it looks like parallel lines have the same slope. Okay. So all parallel lines have the same slope. Let's look at example 1. Write the equation of a line parallel to give a line. Write an equation of a line passing through this point, and it's parallel to the line whose equation is this. Express the equation in point slope form and slope intercept form. Well, looking at this line right here, if I look at this line here, this line has a slope of two. How do I know that? Because this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. Okay, so the slope of this line is 2. So I need to have a line parallel to this line. Well, if it's parallel, then this equation I'm going to write up has to have the same slope of 2. Let me use my point slope form, which is in the last section. And I'm going to go ahead and put 2 in right here because I need to have the same slope for parallel lines. So y minus, and it's going to go through this point right here. So I have y minus 1 equals 2 x minus a negative 3. I get y minus 1 equals 2 x plus 3. And this is your point slope form. And if I want to end slope intercept form, I want to make sure that they have y um, solve for it, y by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go up here and I have y minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and recopy this. And I now have y minus 1 equals 2 x plus 6. And if I add 1 to both sides, I get y equals 2x plus 7, and that would be my slope-intercept form. Okay, so now go ahead and try the next problem on your own. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Please pause the video with me, and then when you um, replay the video, the answer will be there for you to check. Okay, so I got uh, these two equations. I got this one right here for the point slope form. I got y minus 5 equals 3 quantity x times the quantity x plus 2. And then the slope intercept form is y equals 3x plus 11. So this is the equation of a line that's parallel to this line. And notice how this line here has a slope of 3. This line here has a slope of 3. And that shouldn't surprise us because, remember, parallel lines have the same slope. Let's look at these two lines here. And let's look at this first line here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this one right here. Let's eyeball this line and eyeball the slope here. So I'm going to pick two points. Here's one right here. One right here. Okay. Looks like I rise one, two units and run one, two, three units. So the slope of this line in red is two over three. Now let's find the slope of this other line. Over here, I'm going to put two points on that line. So here's a point right here. A point right there. It looks like from the left point, I go down one, two, three units. So m equal negative three. Go to the right, two units. Went down one, two, three. That's negative three. To the right, two units. So the slope of this line here is negative three over two. 
Now these lines are perpendicular. Perpendicular mean they meet at a right angle. So this right here, it meet like a T, um, meet the right angle right here, 90 degrees. But what do you notice about these two slopes here? If you look at it carefully, you notice that I have 2 over 3 here, and I have 3 over 2 here. So it looks like they're reciprocal. Basically, I flip the fraction over. One slope is positive, and one slope is negative. And that should make sense because this line rises, this line falls, so it should have um, opposite slopes, and are positive and negative. So it looks like if a line is perpendicular to another line, if its slope, if its slope is the opposite, reciprocal of the other line. So notice again, I have opposite signs, one positive, one negative, and reciprocal because it's 2 over 3 and 3 over 2. If we just just to flip the fraction over. Let's do um, a quick little exercise here. If one line has a slope of 3 fifths, then the line perpendicular to it would have a slope of, it would have to be opposite signs, so it would have to be negative. I'm going to take the reciprocal of 3 over 5, which would be 5 over 3. If one line has a slope of negative 4 7, then the line perpendicular to it would have a slope of, when we opposite signs, they need to be positive, and the reciprocal would be 7 over 4. Positive. And again, I'm not going to write that positive out, I just dipped that one problem there just to emphasize that opposite sign. Okay. If a line has a slope of 1 over 9, then the line perpendicular to it would have a slope of, well, it's got to be negative, this is positive, it's going to be negative. The reciprocal of 1 over 9 is going to be 9 over 1, which same thing as negative 9. If one line has a slope of negative 7, then the line perpendicular to it will have a slope of, so it's got to be positive, because it's opposite sign. And then this is like negative 7 over 1. The reciprocal of that would be 1 over 7. And again, opposite sign and the reciprocal. So go ahead on your own, go ahead and figure out all the next four statements. Go ahead and figure out the um, slope of the perpendicular line. And I'll go ahead and pause the video. And you pause the video also. And when you replay it, you can check your answers. Okay, so for the first one, I got negative 3 over 7, then 11 over 6, then 4, and then negative 1 half. Okay, now let's do some exercises or examples where we're going to find. The slope of any line that perpendicular to the line with the equation is this right here. So for example 2 part A, I'm given this equation, x plus 4y minus 8 equals 0. I want to find the slope of any line perpendicular to this line. First of all, I have to find the slope of this line. To find the slope of this line, I want to go ahead and have it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So that will give me the slope right here. So I'm going to go ahead and track x from both sides and add 8 to both sides. So I get 4y equals negative x plus 8, divide both sides by 4. So I get y equals negative x plus 8 over 4. So I flip it up, I get negative x over 4 plus 8 over 4. And I get y equals negative 1 over 4x plus 2. So the slope of this line is negative 1 fourth. But if I want to line it perpendicular to it, and a simple perpendicular, and I'll go ahead and show you here, perpendicular means this symbol right here. So perpendicular slope, the perpendicular line would have a slope of, so you want the opposite reciprocal. So the opposite negative, which is positive, reciprocal of 1 over 4 is 4 over 1, which is just 4, so positive 4. So the perpendicular line, we have a slope of 4. Okay. Part B, we want to write the equation of a line passing through that point as perpendicular to the line with well, the equation is this one right here. So part B, we use this right here. And we need the point uh, 3, negative 5, so y minus a negative 5 equals, and we use the slope of 4, can want it to be perpendicular to this line. Perpendicular line with the slope of 4 x minus 3. I get y plus 5 equals 4x minus 3. This is the um, point slope form, but they want it in general form. So general form is when you have um, 
all your variable numbers on one side and m equals 0 on the other side. So this would be y plus 5 equals 4x minus 12. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this side equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Subtract 5 from both sides. I get 0 equals 4x minus y minus 17. That would be general form. So on the exam or in your homework, just make sure you understand what format they want. Um, slope intercept form would be y by itself. Point slope would be what you come up with after you put everything in the point slope formula. And, and um, general form is when you have 0 on one side and everything else on the other side. And preferably all these are um, non-fractional coefficients. Okay. So let's go ahead and on your own, go ahead and do the next problem. And so you know the drill, pause the video and then go ahead and restart it when you um, get done. Okay, so for part A I got a slope of 3 for the perpendicular line. And then my um, equation in part B for the line perpendicular to that line passing through negative 2, negative 6, the 0 equals 3x minus y. Okay, let's go on to the next example. The next example, I actually have this example, um, there's no homework problems on this, but this will be on your exam, so make sure you please understand it. The line graph for the number of women and men living alone is shown in figure um, below. Find the slope of the line segment for the women, describe what the slope represents. So here we have the line um, segment for women, and here on the x-axis we have the years, and then in, on, on the y-axis we have the number of, of uh, women living alone, or in this case people, in this case women living alone in the millions. So find the slope and do m equal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's call the first point right here, it is red, x1, y1 x2, y2. So the slope is going to equal 18.3 minus 14.0 all over 2008 minus 1990. That would give me, just my calculator out, 4.3 over 18. That means I have 4.3 million women are living alone. every 18 years. We really want to know really what it would be for every year. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and divide this out. 4.3 divided by 18 would give me approximately 0.24 over 1. So in a sentence, let's go ahead and describe what the slope represents. The slope indicates that the number of American women living alone increase at a rate approximately 0.24 million each year from 1990 to 2008. That is 0 0.24 million. I'm going to write that a little bit nicer. Per year. And notice how it increased, it went up each year. So from um, here to here it went up about 0.24 million to the next year. Okay, again, there's not going to be any homework problems over this, but I want you to understand how to how to um, interpret slope in terms of a word problem. So on your own, do the same thing, but do this for the um, line segment for men. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. And you can go ahead and check when you get done. Okay, so you can check your answer with mine. And I get the slope right here of 0.32 over 1 approximately like at around. And it says the number of men living alone increased at a rate of approximately 
0.32 million per year. Okay? That takes us to the end of the section.